Hello everyone, I am Sebastian Hillier and I'm going to present to you the atmosphere rendering techniques we have developed in Anoli Engine. So what are we talking about? Uh, the sky is the result of complex light scattering in particles within the atmosphere. On Earth, uh, it has a rich blue color during the day and it features more complex yellow, green and red tones at sunset. <coughs> when light scattering happens between objects and your eyes, this physical interaction is called eye perspective. Those objects then look like they are in a fog. Last but not the least, clouds are also part of the atmosphere, also interacting with light and casting volumetric shadows within the atmosphere. Many other different types of atmosphere exist in space, for example Mars and its blue sunset or Titan's complex atmosphere. Moreover, uh, other cl cloud formations can happen within a planet atmosphere such as cyclones, tornadoes or volcanic plumes. So the light will scatter several times within the atmosphere before reaching your eyes, and this is an important effect to simulate to achieve rich atmospheric visuals. We cannot take pictures of the real world with and without this phenomenon, so here are some um, artificial examples actually achieved using path tracing. <coughs> you can see that on Earth during sunset, it is critical uh, to simulate multiple scattering to achieve uh, believable results and avoid a yellowish atmospheric atmosphere look. Uh, at the bottom here, images show that multiple scattering is important for the light to fill up the space between the camera and landscape when inside a volumetric shadow. In this case, this is the result of light scattering around mountains. Cloud participating media usually have an albedo close to 1. As such, light can bounce uh, thousands of times before, before going out of the cloud at any position. Thus, multiple scattering is a requirement to render clouds that do not look like dark smoke. So, we wanted artistic freedom and be sure the tech is easy to use in uh, the Unreal Editor. We wanted a high visual quality without objectionable artifacts. We wanted to be close to the ground truth in the way we represent and render the atmosphere and its components, while supporting dynamic time of day and weather. We also wanted to support views from space, because many industrial applications or games require such a possibility for visualization or science fiction. And last but not least, we wanted the technique to be scalable because our game Fortnite runs on mobile. And we also wanted the atmosphere rendering performance to be decoupled from the screen resolution, for example, Crazy 4K. So here are some results uh, we now have in Unreal Engine. <coughs> the first video shows the atmosphere being rendered in real time in the editor. The sky is updated each frame so the atmosphere can be tweaked to match Mars atmosphere without any delay. The second video shows a view from space of planet Earth with a sunset. The third video shows that one can seamlessly fly from ground to space and even represent tiny planets with soft volumetric shadows from, cl from clouds. And the last video shows some cu custom cloud material representing some cyclone with exotic colors. So let's start with sky rendering. <clears throat> Several methods have been proposed to render skies. For instance, it is possible to rematch the atmosphere or fit a mathematical model on the sky color itself. However, such models are not taking into account multiple scattering or does not, uh, do not provide solutions to render the IRL's perspective on objects and do not, for example, support views from space. So a more successful uh, approach to sky rendering are the lookup table based models. They have been used successfully in many games with a few simplifications. However, they do have some limitations. Some visual artifacts can uh, sometimes be seen at the horizon and it becomes unavoidable for thick atmosphere. The high dimensional scattering lookup table is expensive to update and requires n iterations to compute the result of n orders of scattering. And also, volumetric shadows from clouds is not directly supported. So before we dive in the rendering technique, I wanted to mention that we represent the atmosphere material the same way as it has been done in previous work. Please refer to our, uh, our GSR paper for more details. So we started by looking at what is really required to render the sky, a bit like when you want to best represent uh, visual features of a BRDF. You have to identify the representative characteristics having a high impact in order to reproduce the target visual. One can easily notice that the distance sky is of very low frequency. Even the miscattering lobe uh, is a soft blob around the sun, and the aerial perspective is also very smooth on screen and in depth. The only high frequency we can see are the rapid change of atmosphere color near the horizon and the variation due to volumetric shadows. And on top of that, we also recognize the importance of multiple scattering in order to faithfully represent atmospheric scattering and achieve better visual results. More believable visual results, I mean. So from this simple uh, visual analysis, we propose a way to render all these important visual details using a new set of low-resolution LUTs maintaining high-frequency visual features. 
<coughs> this slot allows us to also decouple the atmosphere rendering performance from the screen resolution. It makes the technique scalable from mobile to high-end PCs by simply tweaking the LUT resolution and remarching sample count. Now, how can we render an atmosphere? We will use a typical volumetric remarching with sample count adjusted based on distance. <coughs> For each sample, we evaluate the light transmitted uh, through the atmosphere, the phase function and atmosphere material, and from that we can deduce the amount of light scattered toward the camera and the transmittance over the background, and so on. Multiple scattering is typically too expensive to avoid this way, so approximations will be used and I will describe them. As mentioned uh, previously, we often need to evaluate the light transmitted through the atmosphere toward a point. Instead of uh, secondary marching, we use the same lookup table proposed by Brunton, storing colored transmittance. And by default, our rendering technique is optimized for views from the ground. In this case, we compute a single transmittance value for, from the top of the planet to the ground, and it is applied on all entities. <coughs> but we also give the option to apply that function per pixel in order to achieve more realistic space views of a planet and its terminator, uh, and its termi terminator region. And this can also have the planet itself cast shadows onto moons, for instance, nearby moons. The sky view, uh, sky view uh, lot is the new lookup table we propose in order to render the distant sky. It stores the remarching result using a latitude longitude mapping. And please note that the uh, latitude mapping is non-linear in order to maintain the high frequency colors at the horizon while reducing linear interpolation artifacts. The lookup table can also be uh, used to store the contribution of any number of suns at once. So we can now render the distance sky as seen here, and the sun disk is composited at this stage. The IOL perspective lookup table uh, stores luminance and transmittance, uh, and it is evaluated and stored in a volume texture mapped onto the camera first one, as proposed in some previous work. This can be applied on opaque and transparent uh, surfaces, as you can see here, without and with the IOL perspective LUT. Uh, the evolution of the luminance resulting from multiple scattering is simplified by gathering ideas from previous work from light transport papers from, for participating media and hair rendering, but this time adapted to atmospheric rendering. Our physically based approach can approximate the evolution of an infinite number of scattering orders. For the sake of time, please refer to our EGSR paper for more details. But in short, uh, we end up with a two-dimensional lookup table storing the isotropic multiple scattering contribution, uh, and this can be created for any, any sample in the, within the atmosphere. Okay, so let's have a look at some results now. <coughs> we have compared our approach to the state-of-the-art technique from Brunton and a volume path tracer we have developed specifically to be our ground truth. In short, the comparison shows that our model is close to the ground truth model, uh, meaning close to the state-of-the-art model for atmosphere close to the Earth of or Mars. And it is also the only model that can faithfully reproduce the effect of infinite multiple scattering in denser uh, extraterrestrial atmospheres. Please refer to our EGSR paper for more uh, in-depth analysis and, and also issues related to that lookup table. Here you can see the performance while building those lookup tables uh, we propose on PC or mobile. Please note that the transmittance slot can, also can have an even uh, lower resolution on mobile and use less samples if you are willing to accept minor visual differences. And you can see that we get a nice match between high-end PC and the lower-end mobile platforms we support. On the other end of the complexity spectrum, we have a work-in-process prototype of a reference uh, for atmosphere rendering in an unreleased path tracer. Global illumination here is coming from light scattering on particles within the atmosphere layer, not from a distant cube map. And from this, we get correct global emission within the atmosphere, as well as proper volumetric shadows and multiple scattering. <coughs> okay, so let's chat a bit about the rendering of clouds within the atmosphere now, because they are key to achieve believable skies. So recently, beautiful real-time cloud rendering implementations have successfully shipped in games. Uh, Schneider proposed a way to assemble noise primitives to render visually convincing volumetric clouds. Then Bauer presented a method improving this approach using a unified model uh, rendering nearby volumetric, fog, and cloud all together. However, these methods are relying on static ways to combine noise to represent clouds. They still give artists a lot of flexibility through the exposed parameterization, but we wanted to lift this limitation. In Unreal, the cloud layer is a volumetric material graph that is authored by tech artists, and the workflow can be customized using Unreal's blueprint. 
With that, one can render any cloud shape, for instance, tornadoes or bunny-shaped clouds, uh, if, if you feel like it. <clears throat> Later, I'll also talk uh, about more uh, details, such as uh, multiple scattering, beer shadow maps, or other visual features. <clears throat> so clouds are rendered using rematching, but how can we evaluate the multiple scattering contribution? As mentioned before, this phenomenon really defines the distinctive appearance of a cloud. Without multiple scattering, a huge part of the energy is lost because the participating medium albedo is usually very close to one, meaning that the light is almost never absorbed. As you can see, this debug representations, a path that needs to be integrated to gather scattered luminance according to different phase functions, are complex. There has been some work done to solve this in real time, but nothing that seems shippable while respecting the complex visuals of clouds. So we settled on using the multiple octave of single scattering approach proposed by Rehinge. <coughs> this is, uh, so in this case, you can see on these images, uh, single scattering only, and I show a pass rest uh, result at the bottom, just to give you a visual idea of the ground truth. And this is the result when using two octaves of single scattering, you can see that the light penetrates deeper into the medium, achieving a brighter and more cloud-like appearance. However, this is not true multiple scattering simulation, and as such lack other defining visual features such as uh, dark edges, uh, being the result of low probability of light scattering toward the eyes in those regions. Uh, multiple scattering in a high albedo situation is challenging even for offline rendering, so we have to cheat a bit here, unfortunately. One option is to use the custom transmittance function presented by Schneider, uh, but we prefer to stay physically based and let artists control such effects uh, from the material graph by, we basically recommend to simply lower the albedo near the edge of the cloud. And as you can see on this sketch, rays will travel more uh, in low albedo region at the edges of the volume, and that will automatically reveal details at edges. And you can see here the subtle effect it brings. So you can see dark edges looking like the reference on the top. However, this is like ambient occlusion. It is wrong, uh, but it works and helps visually. So be careful to not overdo it in, over in order to avoid the dirty smoke look, uh, dirty cotton like, like uh, look of clouds. Do not want that. <clears throat> so just to put another nail in the coffin, clouds are not composed of dust or air molecules. They are made of many tiny water droplets resulting from condensation. This results in refraction events, in turn resulting in complex phase function that is wavelength dependent. It produces many visual features such as <coughs> sharpening, glory halo, and the dark edges we discussed before. So if you use an isotropic phase function, it can look too bright or too dark when using a single strongly uh, forward single lobe phase function and you will never be able to render realistic clouds like this one. <coughs> I have been able to achieve this render using my personal volumetric processor running on GPU and sampling the realistic mi-scattering water droplet phase function you can see on the left. And this, when you use this, you automatically get all of these uh, important cloud visual features with a uh, appropriate uh, brightness, from my experience, of course. So there's still research to conduct to get, to get this result in real time, but today I do not have any nice solution to give you apart from the albedo trick I mentioned before. That being said, it is possible to do the following. <coughs> Generate a complex phase function using the miplot software. Then for the sake of real time performance, that phase function can be used to on the single scattering path only. And that at least allows us to recover the fog bow and glowy halo visual features, <coughs> as you can see on the right. <coughs> and multiple scattering is then simply evaluated using the previously mentioned multiple octave or single scattering uh, approach. So when you, when rematching the volumetric data, you need to consider how you integrate the lighting. A few years ago, I have presented an analytical solution better than Simpson's or trapezoidal integration because it respects Beer's law over a considered segment. However, it was only supporting a single shadow value over the segments. Uh, here has zero. <coughs> I considered improving this by taking into account a different shadow value per vertex that are linearly interpolated over the segment. You can see the analytical integration there. You can see here the before and after difference. It does help uh, better define the cloud shape and avoid some visual artifacts on the top of the cloud in some cases that you can see on the right. However, we are not using it uh, yet because it is a bit more expensive and also a bit unstable due to the division by the square ex extinction, which requires some clumping in order to avoid numerical precision issues. So I look forward to seeing if any of you use this or if there are any, even any better ideas out there. 
So, on top of lighting, you also need to take into account occlusion. Uh, and cloud occlusion is important to avoid uh, and render sunlight shafts within the atmosphere. As you can see here on the right. <coughs> One can use exponential shadow maps like Bauer. In this case, uh, in, and in case you never noticed, exponential shadow maps are exactly beer slow, but with only one constant extinction value for all the pixels. The problem is that it will result in occlusion that will always converge to a transmitter of zero over a large distance. The problem is illustrated here on this almost vertical plane receiving cloud shadows. From uh, shadows are getting darker uh, with distance from the cloud layer. You can see, uh, and this is a problem, especially when the sun is at the horizon. And since extinction constant uh, is ex since extinction is constant for all the same pixel, there is no right answer here. So instead, we propose a new occlusion representation we call Beer Shadow Map that is more consistent and avoid the problems I just mentioned. <coughs> so here is a comparison between the exponential shadow map and Beer Shadow Map approaches. Beer Shadow Map is basically the transmittance curve of an homogeneous medium with extension varying per, per pixel. It starts at depth z and has a clamp on the optical depth to store the transmittance converging towards zero. All of this data is generated while remarching to generate the Beer Shadow Map. <coughs> and we can now evaluate volumetric shadows using Beer Shadow Maps. We can use per-pixel tracing with sample uh, jittering and TAA to achieve sharpness, but at the cost of full resolution tracing. If this, is, if this per pixel tracing cost is prohibitive for your use case, it is possible to simply store the shadows as part of the sky view and aerial perspective lots. You will then just have to play with their resolution and the sample count in order to achieve good looking results for your content. Uh, we have also more optional visual features that can be enabled if the user uh, budget uh, allows it. For instance, it is possible to run a secondary trace toward the ground to evaluate its contribution to the ground lighting. This can be very important to help with the perception of the cloud shape and have some secondary shadows. It is also possible to have the atmosphere, atmospheric transmittance evaluated for each step we take uh, when integrating the cloud lighting. Uh, it results in a more complex and realistic look, especially at sunset, as you can see on the right. So this is with single transmittance value for all the samples, and this is with more complex transmittance per sample. And this match is basically the reference here. So to recap, first we have the atmosphere participating media. It can be occluded by clouds. Uh, then we have uh, the cloud participating media then that can cast shadow on itself. And the atmosphere is also applied on the cloud. And just as an example, this is how it looks when you make the atmosphere thicker. It remains consistent. <coughs> so you can see here the tech used in the Unreal Engine 5 real-time demo, Lumen in the Land of Nanite. Physically based does not only mean realistic. You can see at the bottom the result of stylized cloud rendering in Fortnite cinematic, as well as an experiment that Ryan Brooks has conducted. So to conclude, uh, I have presented to you the atmosphere rendering technique available in Unreal Engine. It can scale from high performance to high fidelity rendering and from low-end mobile to high-end platforms. Only cloud rendering is not reasonably achievable on mobile for now. It supports uh, dynamic atmosphere and time of day uh, and approximate multiple scattering using physically based approaches and can also render uh, views from ground and space. So a few references for you later to check out and some links interesting for with about this talk. And basically that is it. Thank you very much for listening.